In this video, I will give an update on the beginner's guide to self-employed CPF. And I know that there are a lot more self-employed people out there, especially after the COVID pandemic. People have been looking at freelancing, side hustles, and everything that is earning side income for them. But they don't know how to do CPF for self-employed people. First of all, in the eyes of the government, you are only considered a self-employed person if you registered yourself. To register, you have to submit your income declaration to IRAS at the tax filing period every year. So I think for this year, the tax declaration just ended. And then by the time your notice of assessment is finalized, IRAS will send you a letter informing CPF as well that you have to make mandatory CPF contributions in your Medisafe account. So how do you declare your income as a self-employed person. I think the term is called net trade income and net trade income will be defined as gross trade income minus allowable business expenses, capital allowance and trade losses as determined by IRAS. And then some of you will have this naughty idea in your head already. Why would I be so stupid to declare my income to IRAS and let them tax me higher? If you remember during the year of 2020 when COVID just struck, do you remember that self-employed persons are eligible for $9,000 of payout from the government if they were actually registered as self-employed persons before 2020? This $9,000 grant was given to them to help them tide over the COVID period, especially during circuit breaker, where they could not go out to meet people and do business and generate revenue or income sources. So it's meant to be a support grant to these self-employed persons who were registered. So if you were not registered back then, firstly, you are not eligible for the grant. Secondly, you will lose all your income sources when such a pandemic strikes. Now, the next point is, as residents of Singapore, it's our duty to pay tax, okay? You live in Singapore, you use a public facility, all these need money to upkeep and maintain one, right? So we really need to be compliant to do our tax filing. And evading taxes uh, is illegal, okay? Once IRAS found out, you may go to jail, okay? But if you want to speed up the process and manually register as a self-employed person, you can definitely do that because under the CPF online services, you may manually register via the self-employed income declaration form which is available on the CPF online services page. And of course, if you have further questions, do come and join us at our over 7,000 members Telegram group. We are a very active community talking about all this kind of CPF stuff as well as credit card strategies, personal finance. Join us at Honey Money SG Telegram. But you see, one thing about self-employed persons is that your income will still be taxed at a personal income tax rate. Not that there's anything wrong with personal income tax rate in Singapore. I believe it's still fairly low compared to other countries. But beyond a certain level, you need to consider for yourself whether setting up a private limited company is more advantageous to you in terms of taxes, especially when you have normal employment income coming from your full-time job plus your side hustle income. Maybe you will be pushed to a tax bracket which is not advantaged for you. For example, like 15%, which is when you will start to consider, is it time for me to incorporate a private limited company? And this was fundamentally what I did in January this year. I incorporated a company to be more tax efficient. So for those of you who are interested but have zero clue of incorporating a company in Singapore, can you do it yourself DIY? Yes, but is it worth your time and effort? Probably not because I have studied accounting. I know how tedious it is. That's why I did look at a few professional service providers who can help me incorporate a company and at the same time employ a company secretary. I think the benefit of this is that since I have no prior experience and I could employ the help of others to do it for me, I could save a lot of time and the time could be better used for me to run my own business and let the professionals handle the compliance part. Then I discovered Awesome through Google reviews and have engaged them to help me incorporate a company and I could share from my personal experience was that the whole incorporation experience was really seamless. I did not have to do a lot of back and forth kind of thing and I even paid a good rate after using a referral code. So not just incorporation services, Awesome do provide professional services like accounting and corporate secretary which is totally essential for any small business to start out. So I'm trying to pay it forward. If you are considering to incorporate a company, you can use my Awesome referral link down below and get a free incorporation plus 16% off any services from Awesome today. But let's come back to the topic of self-employed persons, right? The thing about self-employed persons is that you have no one contributing CPF for you. You are self-employed. 
you will have to contribute your own CPF contributions, not like a full-time employee, whereby your employer will pay you 17% of employer CPF. And then you yourself as an employee will contribute 20%. And that means a combined 37% of your total pay. Well, the good news is your 20% own CPF contribution is no longer mandatory as a self-employed person. But let me just speak for myself, right? In year 2021, when I started YouTube and my annual income from this whole YouTube self-employed thing was less than $6,000. And if you're earning less than $6,000 of annual net trade income, you don't have to contribute to any MediSafe. So that may be a good thing or bad thing depending on how you see CPF. But MediSafe contributions will be mandatory if you're earning at least $6,000 of net trade income yearly. And this was what happened to me at year 2022 because I definitely earned more than $18,000 that year. But you see, there is also a cap on the mandatory MA contribution because above 72,000, 8% MediSafe contributions will be capped at $5,760. So the maximum MediSafe contributions will be based on $72,000 of net trade income, which is the same amount of the ordinary wage of a full-time employee. The OW. So how do you know how much MediSafe you had to contribute as a self-employed person? Okay, I'm not going to show you the calculation, but I will point to you to the CPF calculator because all you need to do, put in your net trade income and then the calculator will tell you how much you will need to contribute. And like I said, once your tax NOA notice of assessment is finalized, IRAS will communicate to you how much MediSafe you need to contribute to your CPF. And for myself, since I earned above 72000 from my YouTube income last year, I have to contribute $5,760 to my MediSafe account. The good thing is, as a self-employed person, you could use gyro installment. Okay, so not just your IRAS can use 12 months installment. Your CPF contribution for MediSafe self-employed person can also use gyro and you know what that means right I use HSBC EGA for that 1% gyro cashback now if you were a similar situation as me in 2022 where I was a full-time employee at my ex-company plus I'm doing YouTube on the site as a self-employed person you have to report this income haul it's additional on top of your normal full-time job if you don't declare can you escape maybe but can you be caught Yes, highly. Because not just IRAS will catch you, but also CPF asking you to top up your MediSafe. Even if you reach your basic healthcare sum in the MediSafe account, like me, still have to contribute. Ho. Don't think you reach basic healthcare sum in your MediSafe account, you are twaki already. Okay, even myself need to contribute. Just that when I contribute the MediSafe, it will flow to my OA instead since my MA and SA are all at max. Now finally, let's talk about some tax relief, right? Because as a self-employed person, you do enjoy tax relief if you do voluntary contributions to your three accounts, which means OA, SA and MA. That is something different from full-time employees. But there's definitely a cap and that will be 37% of net trade income or 37% of $102,000. So out of these two numbers, they will only choose the lower amount for the tax relief cap. To give a specific example, if you declare $50,000 of annual net trade income, you will only be given a tax relief cap of 18.5k. So any VC3A above 18.5k will not get a tax relief for self-employed persons. By the way, the MA portion of the voluntary contribution to three accounts will be counted towards the MediSafe contribution, the 8% that I talked about, you know, the cap 5760 for 72k. Yeah, it will be counted. So yeah, these are some basic facts you should know as a self-employed person with regards to CPF and maybe some IRAS facts. But really, if your personal income tax rate is really very high, consider incorporate a company through Awesome like what I did. And if you're curious to learn about my conversion from a self-employed person to a full-time business owner as I started YouTube this year, then I refer you to my previous video where I shared my three months reflections after I quit my job to start this business full-time.